Shalom, it's Jacob from Avachad, Moadim Lesimcha. This is uh, the fourth day now of Sukkot, or the fifth day, 18th of Tishrei, 5782. You know, everything is very fresh, very new, and I thought to begin with going through the Midrash called Midrash Halel. Midrash Halel, which the sages are going to teach us about the Halel and the significance of the Halel and then the meanings of the Halel. So we'll be using the redesigned Teilim by Avacha.org that is in the works right now that we're collecting a dedications for different names and different things so that we can compile and print it and then release it to the world in a hard cover with full color print. So we want to do it right, obviously. So let's just go right now to Hallel. And then I'm going to be reading the Midrash Hallel from this book by Zichron Aharon. These Midrashim, whoever compiles them, checks them over, fixes them, adds all the vowel points. It's really an amazing work. Okay, and so here we are at the start of Hallel. Perik Kuf Yud Gimel in Tehilim, which would be page 375 in the Ahavah Echad redesigned Tehilim. Okay, so let's just, let's just jump right into Midrash HaHalel, and it's going to actually introduce to us the book of Tehillim, and hopefully we'll be able to understand and get an insight into these kinds of things, especially for this time, now saying Hallel every single day, and the significance of saying Hallel and saying Hashem's name and praising Hashem's name every time we say Hashem's name as we read it in the verse, then we destroy all this evil energy, these evil lies, these evil forces, whatever this is. However, it's explained as, as the verse, Tipol mitzidcha elef, a thousand from your left, urvavam yeminecha, and ten thousand from your right. As David HaMelech told Shlomo, every time you say God's name this is what happens. So the Hallel, this extra sequence of saying Hashem's name so many times and destroying all these evil energies and associations and or whatever it is and so Midrash HaLel opens up by giving a general overview of the book of Tehillim itself and it says Be'eser l'shonot shel shevach ne'emar ha'sefer hazeh that this book is written with ten different languages of praise and each one is different and we have to understand the difference between each one it says Benitzuach with with a winning, I guess, with victory, excuse me, Benigun, with a melody, I guess, Bashir with a song, Behalel, with a praise, again, what's the difference between all these things properly, Bemizmor, I thought maybe the source of the English like mesmerize, some kind of mesmerizing deep prophecy, Perik, you know, Behaskil, where it gives you this wisdom, like in Rav Zemir Kohen via Rabbi Isaac Mosens and Shlita, it says Behaskil and, and skill, you know, to skill and to acquire true skills, basically. Bethehila, with angelic praise, I don't even know how these properly would be translated, the difference between Halel and Tehila. We'll get maybe a little understanding coming up, because maybe each of these ten languages are personified or having to do with the next 10 characters that are about to be named. So bitehila bitfila with with imagination and dream birina a language of praise again and going over the Torah ubehodaa and with thanks and admitting before the infinite god. So it says, Vasara Nevi'im Amaruhu, and ten different prophets and elders said the book of Tehillim. Among them, Adam Harishon, right? Abraham, Moshe, David, Shlomo, and these lesser known, Asa, which in Aramaic, which means healing, Haman, which I think is another name for Moshe, according to the sages, Yeduthun, I'm not sure who that is. Avdi Asaf and Daniel. Be Daniel. And then there are those who say also the three children of Korach that uh, before they were swallowed up by the that pit of, to hell, 
they prayed to God and, and God saved them and they were then Levites in the actual temple. So it says, so maybe each one of those languages will have to see it typed up and arranged, but maybe Nitsuah, right, is a Keneged Adam and Nigun is Keneged Abraham. So we have to see how it lines up and uh, maybe what they could what they could teach about one another. But for right now, it says that HaTorah Hamisha Humashim, the Torah itself is written five-fifths. That's what we say. Five, the number five, we learn what numbers represent at the end of the Haggadah of Passover. Who knows five? I know five. Five are the fifths of Torah. As Michael Shlomo Baron Shlita, you know, points out in the book, Song of the Creator, to, to make people aware that it's not five books, it's really five fifths, you know, so he makes that point as well. Thank God. So it says, the Sefer Hazen, this book of Tehillim, is also Hamisha Humshin, is also written in five fifths. And that's why our book restores the placements where you could see what book it's in. So here you could see that the Hallel is in the final and fifth book of Tehillim. This is the books or the fifths of Tehillim. This is the Sidre HaTorah. And this is the Perek. And so we, all of that is seen on, on, the page, on the first page where you can see that we outline, outline it there. And this is the dates for the days of the week. You know, just giving a quick overview. This is already, we're jumping into page, uh, you know, 419 in the PDF or 375 in the actual book. So anyway, Tehillim itself is written in these five-fifths that parallel the five-fifths of Torah. And not only that, but Behalel, but in the prayer of Halel, is also five-fifths. Halel is made up of also five separate fifths that together add up to one whole. Um, how, you know, it's like, what did the Halel see? Or what, what is so, what about the Halel is... Um, gave it this sort of like merit to be blessed to have this kind of structure as well this five-fifths kind of structure like the torah itself and in like the book of Tehillim itself the halal itself as well so it says shivham, that this is the praise vehu tosefet al kol haolam. and this is like a beautiful addition on the entire universe like the pinnacle of what the purpose of the universe is to be able to give back more so to speak, if we can say that we give back more to, to the infinite God. And so this prophetic prayer is like an increase on the world. This is how I understand it right now. But, you know, please correct me, you know, if if it is wrong. So, yes, in the Hallel itself and in the Torah and in in, in the Tehillim itself. Yes, there are those passages that are speaking about the past. Vele Atid. And in the future that is going to arrive soon. There's those till the exodus of Egypt, which really applies every day. And to these very generations. And to the days of Gogu Magog, which is this final showdown and this battle of the nations against God, essentially. But not unless they learn their lesson from scripture and from previous attempts at doing such stupidity and changing their ways like the people of Nineveh and we'll learn how many people were actually in Nineveh and the really amazing revelation of the book of Yonah so it says batkhila lashavar first it has to the past as it, as halel opens up hallelujah uvasof latid hallelujah the same it opens up with hallelujah and it ends with hallelujah Praised is Ka, the creator of the two universes with the two symbols uh, that spell the word Ka, which I'm saying Ka as opposed to actually pronouncing it, but saying the Yud is what Hashem creates the future world and He is what Hashem creates this physical world. The, this physical world with the five senses, He numerically is five, so this physical world is created with the He. And the Yud is actually the, the symbol that you use to add at the start of a word to flip it to the future. Yud is about turning things into the future. Ya'ase, right? Asa is he did in the past to flip it to the future. You add the Yud at the front. Ya'ase. And so it, it's a, now a futuristic thing. 
So it opens up be with Hallelujah, you know, at the start and at the end. It finishes where it really began. We began at the highest level and it was a crazy descent. And now we're trying to loop it back and arrive back to where we started. It has to the exodus of Egypt, as it says, Betzet Yisrael mi Mitzrayim, as we say in Halel. Then it says, Lo lanu Hashem, right? This is Ledorot. Lo lanu Hashem, Ledorot Halalu, Ahavti ki Yishma, Vehodu la Hashem ki Tov, Liyemot HaMashiach, Veliyemot Gogu Magog. So the praising of God, the Halel HaGadol, Hodu la Hashem ki Tov, Ki Leolam Hasdo, that's all about Gogu Magog, it's all about the days of Mashiach, it's all about we really need only God could save us. Only Hashem, the infinite being, can renew the whole world and can protect us from these pharaohs and these tyrants and everyone who wants to depopulate and destroy good people and harm people and lie to people, God forbid, and all this evil will be removed from earth. And that's what we all truly wait for. So that is all included in the Hallel, from the past to the present into the future. So it says, Shmona Asar Yamim Velaila Ehad Omrim Halel. There is eighteen days and one night that we finish saying the entire Halel, the Eluhem, and these are those days. Shmonat Yeme Hagasukot. All eight days of the Hagasukot we say Halel. Which is really seven days of Sukkot and then Shmini Aseret. But then it says Shmanat Yeme Hanukkah and also the eight days of Hanukkah, the absolute craziest miracles seeing the censor Targum to the book of Zechariah, how the, essentially Zechariah saw the entire story of Hanukkah, and that's what's transmitted. And it's truly an amazing, amazing thing. The miracles are indescribable. It's recorded down in the Targum and in other places. But I really think that this Targum version is the most accurate, if I could say such a thing, based on this manuscript alone, which is one of the most amazing manuscripts that we have right now, today, thank God. Whoever wrote it, and it's just absolutely amazing. Thanks to the Galica Digital Library in France, who had the best digital li has the best digital library so far. I mean, Israel is catching up, but they let you download, and it's great. So it says, the eight days of Hanukkah, Yom Tov HaRishon Shel Pesach, the first day of Pesach, and the nighttime, so the at night we say Hallel, but then the next day as well. The Yom Tov Shel Atzeret, which is Shavuot, from what I understand. Okay, and now we're asking, or the kid is asked, interested in, and asks, therefore, because this is the correct way to learn, is that when you have a question, you ask the teacher and the teacher answers you. And this is a much natural, beautiful way to, for information to flow. Mi Amaro, who said Hallel? Who is the one to transmit it? So it says, Amar Rabbi Nehemiah, says Rabbi Nehemiah, David Amaro, David Amelech is the one to say it. Umahayu Yisrael Osin, Mishayatsumi Mitzrayim, Atshema David. So if you're saying that David Amelech said it, what were Bnei Israel doing when they left Egypt up until David arrived? For all this time that they don't know any prayers, they're not saying this beautiful praises to God. So that's a rebuttal, and they're going to say, is it possible that they would eat the Korban Pesach without saying the Hallel as we do on the Haggadah? You know, in the Haggadah is the order of the Haggadah. We read the portion because we don't do it today, but they would actually fold the Korban Pesach and have it with the bitters and the herb and fold it and eat it. Literally, shawarma lava, if you will. And so it's saying... Amar Amru, so they're answering Moshe Amaro. It was really Moshe who said it. At the moment that Bnei Israel left Mitzrayim, so really what this means is that David Hamelech is the one to compile Tehillim. He didn't write it from himself, as we just said. There's ten different prophets and elders that he that he's compiling from. But also the fact that right, so he's only uh, compiling the works that already existed and this is always the pattern it started with speech and then it was later written down so it was a transmission in the families all the way down till this day until david amelech decided to codify these 149 according to the manuscripts prophetic 
chapters of Tehillim, prophetic prayers from all time that include past, present, future, as, as it said here. And so he's saying that Moshe really said it already in Egypt. As it says, Shneemar, Vayomer lo paro lech me'alai, go from, ab from above me, as if. Vayomer Moshe ken dibarta. So, as you said, Vizmano dibarta lo osif od rot panech. We're not going to see your face ever again. Ha, kad atha, kad atha mevakesh mimeni, Shneemar, Vayerdu kol avdecha ele elai, ukeshegi azman ma hu omer, Vayikra la Moshe ulaharon laila. Amar lehe Moshe, emesh hainu avadim le paro, veachshav anachnu avadim la kadosh baruch hu. Amdu az vikilisu la kadosh baruchu shehotziam meavdut leherut venomar lefanav haleluya. If we could sum up, basically saying that I wasn't really super clear on this kind of uh, language, but it's saying that Moshe really originated it that night, and it was just again penned down years later. But Moshe is telling the people there how the whole Haggadah opens up that. Last night we were slaves to Paro, and today we are slaves to Hashem. And slave in English is a tragic word because of the association with the slaves that were in America. And that's not at all what slave, or really then we could change it maybe to servant or a worker, literally. So it's completely different. So it's a very bad uh, translation if people use the word slave for Ebed as opposed to other words, and because of that horrible association, that's not at all what the Torah is describing, and so it's super dangerous to uh, make that mistake, or to not know that, how different it is, because we just think, oh, slave is a use for that, oh, that's a slave, and this is a slave, and no, that's, God forbid, what happened here. So it says, Amdu az So everyone then stood and, and praised Hashem that very night in Egypt with the Hallel, and we said, well, We'll say before God, praise is God, the creator of the two universes, the giver of the two Torahs, the creator of the two scripts, and the two tongues that we use to speak. All that's answered in the Hanukkah pamphlet that you could download on avancha.org as well, in the free download section. So it says, then it begins, Hallelujah. What does that mean? Hallelujah, Mishe Baraha Olam, to the one who created the world, but really the two worlds. Shemaklisino Tobishteotiot, that we praise God with these two symbols, as it says, Ozi Vezimrat Ka. That my fearlessness and my praise is Ka, is the name of the God, the infinite God who created the two universes. Vaomar, Bithu Ba Hashem Adeyad, Ki Beka Hashem Tzur Olamin. With the symbols Yud and He, Hashem, Tzur, formed Olamim in plural, worlds and universes. And so when we say Hallelujah, we're praising God who created the two universes with these two symbols, the world to come first, really, and then this world, which is backwards in a reflection, and the He has the upside down Yud, and things like that. So we'll get into that more and more, but I figured that this would be a good introduction and then we'll get into the actual text and go through as much as we can of the Midrash and try to understand Hallel on a deeper level. Thank you so much for watching and Kol uh, Tov, comments, questions, anything, let us know and we'll try to answer as soon as possible. Thank you so much.